Hi, and welcome to the Pilgrim Path Podcast. I'm Pastor Chris Serber, the Senior Minister of First Congregational Church of Naples, Florida, and the Founder and Executive Director of Supply and Multiply, a ministry that me and my family and a bunch of friends founded in Moe, Haiti. And I'm here today with Pastor Greg Ball, and I'm happy to, to be here with you today because uh, you and I have some of the most unexpected connections and uh, so I tell you what, I, why don't we just get started? Why don't you just tell yeah. folks who you are? Well, excited to be with you, Chris. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great blessing. Pastor Chris and I are neighbors. My church is just about maybe 500,000 feet <laughs> next street <laughs> yeah, over. Exactly. And, um, but we've got a connection that goes way beyond that. Yeah. Um, I have, have been a part of an orphanage in Haiti for 22, 23 years. And actually, you've been to our orphanage, and yeah. I didn't even know it. And once <laughs> yeah. we had uh, got making conversation, found out yeah. the connection of Destiny Village, and uh, I pastored Destiny Church. I've been here in Naples, Florida, 16 years. I moved here from Ohio. Yeah. Uh, I was back in Ohio when we started the orphanage, when we were in Ohio. Huh. Uh, took a mission trip there and changed my life. Yeah. Uh, I was a youth pastor then right. and took a bunch of teenagers, and uh, we got involved in some deliverance ministry there with a witch yeah. doctor and got connected to a bunch of kids there and it really yeah. just impacted me and I haven't stopped going since and we've been a part of, uh, we, you know, we've got this, uh, you know, orphanage that we started called Destiny Village and the, the, the theme of the orphanage is change the child, change the nation. Yeah. So it wasn't an orphanage trying to get children adopted out to get them to the United States. It was really trying to train children up to run their country or take ownership of their country in the yeah. spiritual realm. Oh yeah. And that's kind of been our heart. It's so amazing because when I moved to Naples from the Detroit area at the end of 2020, and I ran into a number of people and I would start talking, I'm always talking about Haiti, and yeah. I was talking about our work in Haiti, and I mean, several times, I don't, I can't, yeah. I don't know how many, several, yeah. people would say, oh, do you know Destiny Village? And of course I know it because, yeah, we're 500,000 feet apart here. Yeah. And uh, Pierre Payan and Mowi are almost right. one place. Right. And I had driven, not only driven by the place and nearly rented a home across the street from it when we lived in Haiti, uh, but then I knew the people. Ed and Leanne. Ed and Leanne that had gone to yeah. serve there. And But I thought, what are the odds that it, it can't be the same I Destiny know, right? Village? Right. And then when we finally met, I'm like, oh, okay. What are the odds of yeah. this? This is a yeah. an uncanny, uh, a strange, you know, Holy Spirit directed yeah. oddity, and um, yeah, so really, really amazing. It is really exciting. Yeah. Um, Ed and Leanne moved there from California. Their daughter Katie right. came to help run the orphanage. End up marrying one of our boys there right. at the <laughs> orphanage. Now yeah. they have a child, and yeah. they're pretty much running everything now. And Katie, yeah. our Ed and Leanne, are still involved. Right. But Katie and Johnny have been running things, especially yeah. with the country and the condition that it's yeah. in. I haven't been in two years. Yeah, me neither. And the last um, time I was there was uh, it was for a wedding almost two years ago yeah. of our director who just who we just relocated here. I got to meet him. Very nice. Yeah, you should. And um, then the time in, I was in Haiti before that was yeah. his first wife's to preach his first wife's funeral. Wow. And and my wife and some of my sons have been in and out a few other times. But yeah, it's so it's so so despicably difficult yeah. to do work in Haiti, especially right now. And this this is a, a good um, I don't know kind of intro to really the conversation I really want to have with sure. you. I love learning from, you know, I'm a congregational pastor. And so that really means undenominational. Okay. And God saved me in an Assemblies of God church when I was 16 in Modesto, California. Yeah. And then I set out thinking, oh, I guess I'm like a charismatic. I'm going to go preach in Assemblies yeah. churches. A number of things happened. I end up going to Baptist seminaries. I thought, oh, I'm a Baptist. And then I end up, you know, connecting with other people. I'm like, yeah. oh, I, oh, maybe I'm a Lutheran. And along the yeah. way, what I come to realize is I can learn from every corner Amen. of Christendom and Amen. just follow Jesus and yeah. just be a disciple. And that has given us, in our work in Haiti specifically, sure. we've taken hundreds of people on mission trips to Haiti and now starting to go to other countries. Yeah. And um, man, I... I it, it, it's God's given me this incredible favor Amen. to be able to connect. I mean, we've taken people. I would say, 
we've taken people from uh, any spectrum of Christianity you can think on yeah. mission trips, from snake handling Pentecostals, sure. which is not exactly true. I know they what you mean. Yeah, handle snakes uh, all the way to you know the most ultra conservative mainline Baptist, yeah. the mainline anybody you can think of. Yeah. And the amazing thing is the common thread of those who've gone with us uh, to Haiti, especially. Uh, has been an interest in deepening their life in the spirit. Yeah. And so, you know, I was curious to ask you about, like, what do you think? Like, I mean, what, yeah. what an uncanny connection between you and I. I can't help but think the longer I follow Jesus, yeah. the longer I'm in the ministry, the more I, I, the more I see not coincidences, but the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, I, and I can't help but see that. Well, um, you know, you and I have had this connection for Haiti yeah. and this, this love for Haiti and the, the people there. And um, now the Lord has brought us here mm -hmm. to Naples with a yeah. similar passion. Right. You know, we, we believe for this city. We believe yeah. for this region, Southwest Florida. God's put us here. and We're going to bloom right. where we've been planted and we're going to bring forth That's fruit, right? right. That's right. Yeah. And so that fruit that we want is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. I grew up in a little yeah. Pentecostal church, a little right. holiness Pentecostal church. Sure. Yeah. Back in uh, Amherst, Ohio, Lorraine, Ohio area, near yeah. near Lake Erie, right on okay. in between yeah, yeah. To Cleveland and Toledo, yeah. a little town called Lorraine. And as a little boy, that's the kind of church that I grew up in. And then, as I, um, you know, when I grew up, I went to a, a church of God. Um, it was Pentecostal, yeah. um, but they had all the cute girls. So I went there to meet <laughs> yeah, girls, you know. Yeah, yeah. They had a youth group there. We didn't yeah. have a youth group. We was like 10 kids in my, in my yeah, church. Yeah. But um, in that, yeah. you know, I thought I was going for one reason, right. but I found this relationship with the Holy Spirit yeah. that was not based on me being afraid to go to hell. Right, right. You see, when I was young, yeah. they preached uh, a holiness message, which I thank God for, and I don't have yeah. regrets. Some, some of my friends have really bad yeah. memories of all that, and they right. tend to focus on the negative side of it. Yeah. But for me, it laid a foundation for me yeah. that I have not departed from sure. as, a, as an adult. Yeah. Um, as a kid, I hated it because it was so focused on what you were doing wrong right. and trying to get you to do right. But the message yeah. was, you know, always, this is not right. That's not yeah. right. Don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. And um, which I thank God for because that put a foundation in me that yeah. now I do it for the right reasons. That's right. And I'm not focused on, you know, this is going to send me to hell. Yeah. I'm living under the grace of God. And I still have those convictions, yeah. that's Chris, but I don't do it for a, um, out of legalism or right. out, out right. of a fear. It's right. out of a love yeah. that is, I don't know. What, but when I found Holy Spirit and I found that... Yeah. I needed a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Right. That kind of changed my walk. It kind of oh, yeah. changed my destiny. Right. And um, Bobby and I, uh, we met. I was traveling with a Southern Gospel band. Mm. So I was driving the bus yeah. for them and right. uh, running sound. Right. Uh, got married. Uh, had uh, my son and, and, and my daughter. Um, and then, I don't know, something shifted in me. Yeah. And I still... Um, my pastor and I are still great friends. He's actually relocated yeah. to South Florida now and he comes to my church, nice. but he deposited in me such a great yeah. love for the word. Right. And, uh, I don't know. It's just been lo lo like bricks that the Lord has just yeah. built this foundation in my life. And, uh, I'm blessed that we are here now that God oh, brought yeah. you here, that I'm here yeah. and that we have a mandate over this city. And I think yeah. You inviting me to be a part of the podcast today and be yeah. a part of this time of sharing really speaks of the unity that we want to see happen Absolutely. with all the pastors in the Absolutely. area and to lay down denominational lines yeah. and barriers and say, you know what? It's one church. Yeah, There's one big C church, Christ Church, yeah. and we get to serve in that. And yeah. so it's a blessing to be here with you and to talk about. Oh, yeah. You know, and that rem so my, my wife, Christina, she grew up Catholic. Yeah. And it was interesting when we were, I was still in the Marine Corps. And we were stationed in Yuma, Arizona, and Paul Killingsworth, hmm. uh, who was my, he's a, an Assemblies of God pastor, he recently retired, and uh, he, he, we went to meet with him, and I was telling him how I had a strong sense of call to the ministry, and I'd been kind of hiding from it, and I wasn't really sure what to do with it, and uh, we were, anyway, we're having all these conversations, and he said about my wife, he said, you know, Catholics, 
make the best charismatics. That's what he said. Yeah. And I'm like, and so I just translate that out. Catholics make great dis. But his point was that uh, they were disciplined. Yeah. And, and and they knew about holy days of obligation sure. and all of those things. So that was interesting. And then similarly, right? So I grew up in North Central California. Uh, you know, I, I say anecdotally how my sixth grade teacher was a Berkeley graduate and as progressive as is humanly possible, yeah. right? So I grew up around a lot of very progressive liberal type ideas and then it was going to a Baptist seminary yeah. and earning my doctorate at one of the most conservative Baptist yeah. schools that I thank God for because mm -hmm. I have this kind of, you know, com compassionate temperament yeah. But they anchored me in the Word of God. Amen. So then it's like, oh, let's let's yeah. mine the depth of the Word yes. and find all of that fruitfulness yes. of it. And so, yeah, absolutely. There, there's there's uh, there's one kingdom. There's one Lord. Amen. And you know, um, I tell you, the, like I say, the longer I walk with Jesus, the more Amen. I think I thank God. Similarly, uh, He saved me in Assemblies of God Church. Yes. And I have always maintained a deep sense of connection that yeah. I'm being led by God daily, yeah. direct interaction. God can really guide your steps. Yeah. And then all this Baptist seminary training, Helps it's like, well. yep. And he'll never do what's inconsistent with yeah. his word. So, so it's, yeah, it's like, like you said, like bricks building. Yeah. When, I think when we're paying attention to what God is doing. And there's a choice yeah. we have to make. Yeah. I could go back and meditate on the negative stuff right. and, and, and get, bitterness in my heart That's or right. bitterness in my mouth to speak negative yeah. towards that. And, and, and there are times that that tries to well up in me, yeah. but I have to constantly be reminding myself yeah. to find the good and meditate oh, on the good to choose life. That's right. He said, I said before you death and life, you yeah. choose. Right. And I, yeah. I, I choose to look back on even through my yeah. childhood. So many people reflect on the negative things that happened in their childhood, yeah. but through the spirit, I believe that God gives me the, opportunity yeah. to grab on and find the good things and oh, meditate absolutely. on those good things absolutely. and think on those things. Yeah. You know, Philippians tells us whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever yeah. things are good report, think on these and meditate on these. Yeah. And that's what we have to do as believers. Oh, yeah. And in this day that we're living in, right. when there's chaos on yeah, every yeah. side and there's, mm -hmm. there's so much corruption on every side and yeah. you can start looking at all the corruption and thinking about all the bad things politically yeah. and all that stuff. Well, if you meditate on that, you're not going to have the joy of the Lord. Absolutely. You're not going to live in a place of hope and faithfulness, right. you're going to see, wow, we're coming in the end times. Everything's falling it's apart. So we're going to, yeah, yeah. the Lord's coming back and yeah. this whole world's going to hell. Right. It's like, well, what, what kind of life is that to live that way? Right. And we're supposed to live with uh, the expectancy of good that God, Absolutely. yeah, I, I know, I'm, you know, I know eschatology and I yeah. know we're coming into some, some right. tough times, but as for you yeah. and I in the, in the kingdom of God, yeah. the curtain's not coming down. The right. curtain is going That's up right. and we're the players on the stage. <laughs> yeah that we get to reap the end time harvest. Absolutely. There's so many hurting people out there right now. Oh, yeah. And if you've got a, if you've got your eyes looking, if you're reaching out and yeah. God will use you. Yeah. And um, I think that's where we're at. A absolutely. I, I, uh, now what, what's going on? This is one of the things that I, so on my way home from this church, okay. To my house, okay. I drive past your new location okay. every day and I yeah. see growth. And, and so, and, yeah. and uh, I see building going on. And now, yeah. but I also know, that uh, I've said it a hundred times, just about the time you want to do a building project yeah. at a church, that might be when you have to find a new pastor. Because, <laughs> because I know so many There's pastors that have gone through. Yeah. Uh, what about the leading of the Holy Spirit yeah. in the context of, you know, like a difficult project, yeah. right? Even though on yeah. the one hand, it's like, hey, this is beautiful, yeah. but certainly I, you know, I got involved building houses in Haiti yeah. and I said, I don't want to be a contractor. And once we started building houses, I'm like, I told you, I didn't want to be a contractor, yeah. but yeah. you know, it's, it's a fruitful yeah. endeavor. Well, we've been here 16 years. Yeah. So my wife and I moved here and started Destiny Church. We right. planted the church here. We didn't know anybody. Yeah. Had never spent the night in Naples. I just got off the exit to see what was at this exit. <laughs> yeah. And we passed this church. We passed all the... Yeah. Well, this church wasn't even built then. I think that, that was about the time they started. They were just you know, starting school. construction. And, yep. And then they had bought the property. Uh, How many years has the church been here? So the church has only been here about... Uh, 13, 13 years, years built and it was an incredible, I mean, th th it's rare 
to see a church built with a traditional worship style, yeah. right? And, and then it flourishes. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's rare to, to begin with. And the man who planted it, God used a guy in his 60s to plant yeah. a church yeah. in Naples. And um, uh, when they needed to buy this property, yeah. a generous donor showed up with a million dollar Amazing. check. Yeah. And, I mean, just, just one really incredible miracle. And the yeah. miracle there isn't the million dollars. I sat with this woman. Yeah, she's almost a hundred years old. Wow. Just the other day, and I and I always thought of the miracle that the founding yeah. pastor used to say this was a miracle. Right. right. The miracle wasn't the million dollars. This this nearly one hundred year old woman said to me and my wife just a few weeks ago, she's talking about how much money she gave, yeah. and I'm like, you gave a lot, you know. Yeah. And she and she's we're talking, we're talking. She's trying to remember the exact amount, yeah. you know. And she says to me, I don't know how I did that. And wow. I said, What do you mean? I said, I think you know you you. You must have had a lot of money in the bank to be able to do that. She, but that's not what she meant. Yeah. She was saying that the miracle was her willingness to let go of it. Yeah. Because money has a kind of way of yeah, wanting to attract so more money, money, right? And yeah. so, so the, the beauty in it, uh, anyway, that's, you know, but, but leading in the, the Holy Spirit, so, right? So we got off. Yeah. We passed. Um, there's four or five churches yeah. right in a row all, all the way down here. When yeah. we got to Gulf Coast, we knew the Lord was speaking to us. Sure. I, I looked at my, my wife looked at me and she said, we should start a church right here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. really? And yeah. she goes, yeah, I could see that football stadium just filled with kids. Oh, man. And that, that started us on this process of praying about it. Within a few months, we had sold yeah. everything in Ohio, moved here, started wow. the church. Yeah. And uh, we started at the Hampton Inn across the street. Okay. Yeah. And we met in a little exercise room there. We only seat 15 or 20 people. Yeah. But we didn't know anybody. Oh, yeah. So yeah. The, the, my heart was just to start a prayer and just start praying and see if God would send us yeah. you know, people to pray with us. And then right. it grew really quickly. And we moved into Gulf Coast High School, yeah. took over the cafeteria, St. Agnes, built a new building. Mm. And they were moving over on Vanderbilt. Yeah. So they left us 300 chairs. Before long, we filled up the cafeteria. That's awesome. And then we went to Palmetto Ridge yeah. in the high school auditorium because it seat about 650 or so oh, yeah, yeah. and so yeah. we went to the auditorium there and then we bought this building here right. off of oaks and hidden oaks yeah and it's been an amazing journey for me yeah. after being here for about um three years mm -hmm. my heart went to v-fib i was jogging in valencia lakes just a few miles from here and my yeah. heart locked up and i dropped dead that's where i live yeah. oh yeah so uh, right there <laughs> yeah, yeah. at the clubhouse yeah. Yeah. um i just got past the clubhouse and yeah. i my heart locked up I dropped yeah. dead. I was dead for almost 15 minutes. I was in a coma yeah. for three days. The fourth day I came out of the coma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Lord just gave my life back to me. Yeah. And then he really started supernaturally blessing us. We've seen so many healings yeah. and miracles in the church. I feel like there was an anointing that came sure. over my life yeah. for signs and wonders and miracles. And, and we've been seeing that. Yeah. Um, shortly after uh, being at Palmetto Ridge High School yeah. Auditorium, I got the opportunity to buy this building. And then since then, we've bought 47 acres of land yeah. on Immokalee Road right. that you pass yeah, by beautiful. on your way there. Yeah. And uh, we're building a 16,000 square foot building up front. That'll yeah. be the daycare. Right. Um, we're going to move our church congregation in that while we're building out the big barn. Right, right. It's got a big barn on there that seats yeah. about 2,500 people. Nice. So we're moving into that location. Yeah. But it is all spirit led. You know, yeah. when we, when we um, used to pro go by that property, we saw the big horse farm there and yeah. always prayed that God would open the door for us. Right. Somehow, by happen chance, we uh, were at um, uh, Turtle Club yeah. having lunch with a guest pastor that was speaking for me. Right. A lady approached me and said, hey, are, are you famous? I said, no, I'm not famous. <laughs> I've only been here for a few years. Yeah. And uh, she said, you want some land for your church? And yeah. I said, yeah, I'd love to have some land for our church. And <laughs> right. she invited us to come to that horse farm. So we went out there, they owned the property. Yeah. 10 years later, we still didn't have the property. We do right. Jericho marches oh, around sure. it, praying right. over it and believing for it. Right. But supernaturally, we made an offer. We yeah. bought the property right. and now we're moving the, the church out there to that That's location. Awesome. So it's really exciting. You know, there's this empty land right here next to the church. And we've tried hard over the years. Many yeah. people have tried to connect with the man who owns it. Yeah. He, he's unwilling to even have a conversation yeah. about the land. So I occasionally walk over there yeah. and pray, and I ask God to give it to this church Amen. for free. 
Come on. Now, I don't know if he's going to do that, but yeah. I ask. Give it to yeah. me for free, and yeah. we'll make some good use out of it. And it's right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so it's, anyway, it's an encouragement there used to, be a to, house to see on what that God property. did. <laughs> when you guys first started building the church, there was yeah. a house on that property. Oh, yeah. And so I had approached him about renting it to us yeah. to put the daycare there. Oh, yeah. But yeah. he, you know, he was real reluctant. Yeah. And, uh, but God can do that, Pastor he, God Chris. won't even, enter, he, the man won't even entertain a conversation right now. So yeah. I know that. Like the, like the uncanny spirit led meeting with yeah. that that woman. The woman. Yeah. Uh, who knows what God will do absolutely. or can do? What's something we could yeah. pray about with you too? That believe God for that because yeah, um, you need room to grow. God's yeah. going to bless this house. Your heart is so good, and yeah. I really feel like there's an anointing over your life, Pastor there, Chris. There, you know, I tell you what, I, I say all the time that I am evidence that God uses who He chooses. Right? Amen. Not not the most qualified. Not yeah. the, you know, I got the degrees and all that stuff, but. I tell you, you know, when, when, that isn't that isn't that hasn't manifested yeah. as what God right. did. Sometimes right. I regret earning a doctorate because it yeah. was too much of a headache. Right. And uh, uh, and also, if you're not careful, all of that theological training yeah. can train you right out of being led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So you got to be careful about that yeah. too. When I moved to Haiti in 2015, we started there in 13. When we moved and lived a year there, yeah. it was like an experience where the only way I know how to describe it, I say often, uh, it, Haiti is the anvil upon which God crushed my heart and has since been reshaping Amen. it. I love because that. when I was there, it was like a certain stripping away. Yeah. Right. I had, I had, I had, a, I have just finished a doctorate. I had all these kind of thoughts about ministry. Yeah. They were right thoughts, but yeah. they weren't God's thoughts. Yeah. I thought, Oh, I've got all these credentials. That'll help me to, I'll pastor a bigger church, a bigger church. Yeah. And then a friend of mine who always said, you should, you should be going to pastor much larger churches, much larger yeah. churches. I spoke in his church right before we moved to Haiti, like a day before we yeah. moved to Haiti. And he says, the only guy I know who keeps climbing ladders downward. And I said, Hey, I'm just following him. I don't know spirit, what to right? tell you. Yeah. But in the process of going there, God opened up a miraculous favor to Man. build connections and ministry. Yeah. I just can't even believe yeah. it. And in the process, it kind of stripped away a lot of extra yeah. things. And I wonder, I'm curious, your experience at Valencia Lakes with yeah. the heart, um, after that, was that something similar? I mean, have you had a like an increase, let's say, clarity or sense of leading or or you know a deepening of of uh yeah. courage or i mean i'm yeah. curious about that well um you know my wife reminds me of everything that happened yeah. at that moment because i didn't right. i didn't even remember falling i don't remember sure. you know no chest pain or anything i just dropped yeah my heart stopped instantly right the doctor said you don't really have a heart attack although it is classified as a heart attack but yeah. your heart's in great shape Right. You just had 99% blockage in the Widowmaker artery, oh boy, and it yeah. shut down everything before your heart had a heart attack. Right. So, you know, since that time of her telling me what happened and the experiences yeah. of it, I, I think for me there's a sensitivity to the Lord to know that God has me here. Right. And uh, it, it, there's this thing of no fear. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm really, I'm not worried about, I don't have a lot of stress. Even like building this building. Yeah. Right. It's like it's all in God's hands. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I can't make stuff yeah. happen. How do you raise that yeah. much money? How yeah, do you, right. you know, I'm not going to stand up there every Sunday. And I told God that going in. I'm yeah. not going to turn this into a fundraising right. every, every campaign. Sunday. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, you know the need. And with yeah. provision, I believe that with vision, there's provision yeah, and absolutely. from God. Absolutely. And just like God spoke to that woman's heart about this church, yeah. God has to speak to someone's heart to say, yeah. we're going to get this done. And here's how we're going to get it done. Yeah. But I think for me, when, when that happened to me, there came this place of total trust in the Lord and belief yeah. that God can do anything. Right. If he can, you know, we, it was hard for my wife, but I needed to know with a stopwatch, show me where it happened and what yeah. you did. Do exactly right. what you did. I wanted to know, was I out yeah. for a minute, two minutes, five minutes? Right. You know, the fastest we could run it was 12 minutes. Right. So from her, what's a stopwatch, her doing and not actually stopping and talking to people. Yeah. So somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, wow. I was without air, oxygen, yeah, any life in my body. Yeah. When the sheriff got to me, he started mouth to mouth in CPR, but he said I was blue and cold and he couldn't oh, get boy. me going. Yeah. But he remembered he had an AED machine and I think that was all spirit led because yeah. it was, there was a lot of, you know, it was happening quick yeah and he remembered the AED machine he went to his trunk got his AED machine hooked yeah. it up to me he shocked me got a little heartbeat kept doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth until the ambulance got there yeah. so 
like all of those things yeah. remind me that God's in control. Oh yeah, and yeah. and that good things, bad things happen to good people. Yeah, because really, Pastor yeah. Chris, I'm just telling you, yeah. like the, there's there was no hidden sin in my heart. There were right. no secret yeah. stuff going on. Right. Um, my heart was pure before the Lord. The Lord yeah. was growing this church. The Lord was moving, right. and so. It wasn't because of there was something wrong in my yeah, life. It right. was God needed me to experience his miraculous power yeah. so that I can believe him for anything. Oh, absolutely. And, if, and I've lived that way. And yeah. I, I really feel like since that moment, my level of faith yeah. has increased to believe right. God for anything. Oh, yeah. That's, that's incredible. That's yeah. awesome. Well, and I see it, nothing but good things happen. I run into people... Similarly, I ran into people for months yeah. telling me that, you know, that I know about Destiny Church. Yeah. And I run into people that are part of your church. And sure. it, it seems like the Holy Spirit is moving yeah. in people's lives. And, yeah. You know. It's really grown and it, it, it continues to grow, but I continue to grow. Yeah. Like I'm learning, you know, we're talking yeah. about the Spirit and being Spirit led and, you know, what it's like to live in the Spirit. And for yeah. me, I'm continually learning how to be Spirit led. I grew up in this thing my whole life, but there are yeah. different layers to this, oh, this spiritual life and walking yeah. in the Spirit. Galatians 5 tells us so much about living in the Spirit, walking yeah. in the Spirit, and, and what it looks like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I believe in an infilling of the Holy Spirit. I believe that when we get saved, Holy Spirit yeah. comes in. We Absolutely. receive Holy Spirit. We couldn't be saved yeah. without Holy Spirit. Sure. But I believe there are different levels to this thing that we can walk in. Oh, yeah. where he reveals himself to us at a deeper level yeah. and it causes us not to live in the flesh that's right yeah, yeah. you're a pastor i'm a pastor uh -huh. but we deal with flesh absolutely we have to we have to fight the flesh we have to yeah. constantly be filling ourselves up absolutely in acts chapter 2 you read about you know them going to the upper room and the right, spirit right. coming and tongues of fire setting on each yeah. head well, in Acts chapter 4, they're filled with the Spirit again. Right. Well, if they already got filled with the Holy yeah, Spirit, wasn't that it? Yeah, and it's just, we're leaky people, man. Yeah. We're just constantly <laughs> yeah, exactly. leaking yeah. out. And, and we have to constantly be every morning. Every believer yeah. has to be opening up the Word of God, filling yourself with the Word of yes. God, walking in the Spirit. Absolutely. If you don't want to fulfill the lust of the flesh, if you think you can do this on your own, right. you're going to be sadly mistaken because we all yeah. need it. Oh, hundred percent. I, you know, there, we one, among the things that I, we do, we do a lot of martial arts. My sons yeah. and I, and we train jujitsu. And it's interesting because different levels of experience with something like jujitsu, yeah. karate, box, and I grew up box, and all these, all these things. You could see somebody. You might think, if I, okay, you see me teaching kids karate and say, oh, you're wearing a black belt. Then I go to a mat. And we're yeah. doing jujitsu. Well, you see somebody else wearing a black belt. Yeah. You think, oh, you guys are like the same, right? No, no, no. And even if we're even if we're at the same rank, right. the rank, right? right. If we're like, oh, you're a pastor. I'm a pastor. We're, right. so, you know, I had this false impression of pastors when I first got saved. I thought they went in to their office and the roof lifted away, yeah. and it was like like a burning yeah. bush. Yeah. I was like, man, these guys. I can't even talk to these guys. <laughs> these guys are on another level. And yeah. um, but when you when you see on a jujitsu mat. Two guys, similar rank, but there's different levels. Yeah. So just because you've been training the same yeah. time, this guy's watching videos, he's going sure. to seminars, and it, and it looks like, oh, I'm bigger. I should be able to dominate yeah. that guy. And then with a little switch of his hips, all of a sudden, I'm in a bad yeah, position. Yeah, that's so true. Well, you know, the I think the best analogy for spiritual warfare is actual warfare, which sure. is like, like martial arts. It's a little different in the Christian life. You can be, you know, oh, I earned my black belt. Yeah. I arrived. Right. Uh huh. Keep thinking yeah. that. Yeah. That's about the time yeah. that the enemy is going to come against you. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to have to what? Go back to Amen. the Bible basics yes. of following Jesus, of listening to the Holy Amen. Spirit, of being guided by the Word. Amen. You know, there's never a time we outgrow that. No, no way. I, and I, and it's to each individual that is given that mandate. Right. You know, he he said you can make your way prosperous by meditating on the Word yeah. in Joshua. You know, meditate yeah. on the word day and night, you'll make your way prosperous. And I think that's, yeah. you know, I think that's for each of us as believers. We've got to continually be yeah. filling ourselves up. My wife grew up Baptist. Yeah. So she was, you know, she believed in the Holy Spirit. But yeah. she, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. But I, she read this book by, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure many people would know Benny Hinn, who oh, was sure, yeah. a real, yeah. you know, pastor that's traveled all over the healing yeah. ministry so. But he wrote a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. Yeah, for, and when she right. read that book, everything changed in her life because right. she realized 
that the Holy Spirit wasn't an it, it was a, he All was right. a person Jesus, this is and that he could, she could have yeah. a relationship with him. Right. And I, I think we all grow in that relationship. You and I yeah. have known each other for a few years now, yeah. but we're growing in our relationship. Right. And, and that relationship comes with covenants. It comes with, yeah. it comes with an expectation right. of support for each other yeah. that um, you know, we're going to be able to stand with each other. Right. Right. And I think that's this walk with the Holy Spirit oh, is lot, getting to of, that place. A lot of people, I think, so there's a number of obstacles to life in the Spirit with regard to my relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it's like, okay, I think sometimes people think this is an afterthought or it's, it's the present. It's something like the shadow of the presence of God, not actually God yeah, in you. Yeah. Uh, and then also there's this idea like, oh, this is the third person of the Trinity as if, the, as if that's a hierarchy. No, the third person in terms of the last Amen. to be revealed right. in the, in the book of Acts and so on. And so, you know, it, it occurs to me, I mean, like I said, I, I really like to look at the spectrums of light from all of Christendom. Amen. You may see it, like see, you find a tradition and maybe they overemphasize something and maybe it's even to their detriment a little sure. bit. However, if you take a close look at why they overemphasize that or why they especially emphasize sure. that, then you see something rich and beautiful. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I thank God that I was saved in the Assemblies of God Church. Yeah. And right away, yeah, I know, I'm Benny Hinn, I went to one of his, his things once, one of the yeah, big crusades, crusades, you know. And um, in those days, that was in the early 90s, and everybody was going yeah. to these things. And, um, but it's like what someone might look at, and I think this happens to a lot of people, what they perceive to be an excess, say, yeah. in a Pentecost, sure. or, right? And then they push away the whole thing, and it's like, that's a mistake. Yeah. Because there's going to be people who may, who may misrepresent, or, or, or the, the, the human goes yeah. off the rails a little yeah. bit, but that doesn't mean... That Absolutely. you should, you should, and that's what happens well, in a lot of circles. Doesn't that go back to what we were talking about at the beginning of choosing to find the good? Oh yeah, you know, yeah. and making a decision. I can meditate right. on my childhood and find a lot yeah. of wrong things. Right. But man, it's like find the good in people Absolutely. and celebrate that. Yes, we gotta be. Um, you know, there's extremes yeah. all over the place. Right. But man, get Christ centered. You know, get get your heart on yeah, exactly. Jesus and Him crucified and right. Him coming back again. You know, yeah. that's it. And I think if we live that way, we can right. help a lot of people find faith in Christ. Oh, absolutely, I agree. Well, I tell you what, I sure appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here, and I'm really enjoyed this conversation, and I hope that it's a blessing to people who Amen. hear it, and the Lord will use it in some significant way in somebody's life. And uh, yeah, is there anything you want to say as we no, close up? I, I yeah. just encourage everybody to um, to live in, in the Word and to walk in the Spirit. Um, the proof of being a Spirit-filled believer mm -hmm. is not speaking in tongues. It is not in laying hands on people. Yeah. The proof of being filled with the Holy Spirit is found in Galatians 5 when he yeah. says, The fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. And it tells us what that oh, fruit yeah, is. Absolutely. And in any time in your life, if you find yourself where you're not producing the fruit of the Spirit or there is not fruit of the Spirit in your yeah. life, that is a sign, that is a, that is a signal that you need to be filled with the Spirit. And you need to get in your prayer closet and you need to spend time in intimacy with the Lord yeah. and allow Him to fill you to the overflow. Yeah. He said in John, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. And He's talking about the Spirit, that yeah. it should flow out of us, that we shouldn't be focused on and meditated on what yeah. the, the, you know, the the negatives or the yeah. bad things, but we right. should be focused on getting people into the light because there is nothing in the world that darkness can do to invade this room That's when right. that light is on. Right. And so if we keep the light of Christ in our hearts, that light will drive out the darkness. Amen. And we'll, Amen. See, we'll see the fruit of the we, Spirit. We have, uh, you know, I teach, uh, I started doing it in you know, 2016, uh, teaching a, a karate program. I love martial arts yeah. and, I, and I'm looking for ways to incorporate it into ministry. Yeah. And I came across another, another pastor that was doing it and a couple of people and I thought, okay, I can use this. And in a traditional karate school at the end of the class, 
or at some point in the class, you yeah. have something called a dojo kun. It's like a motto. Okay. And in most karate schools, it, it will be something like you know integrity, honor. Yeah. Well, what my students recite at the end of every class is Galatians five twenty two, the fruit of the spirit. Come on. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and so and our belt system. Yeah. The white belt is love. That's the yellow awesome. belt is joy, and Come so on. so we're we're using legitimate karate training right. to train the body. Uh, but mostly as a metaphor for spiritual warfare to it. produce the, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And I take them to Ephesians 6, and yeah. we talk about the armor of God. That's so uh, good. And being you know, ready for war in that way. Well, those are the disciplines yeah. that prepare us, right? Yeah. When you're living that way every day, right. when you're walking in that, that mindset and that, that spiritual enlightenment, it yeah. changes everything. Well, hey, thanks for coming. What I really appreciate it, guys. Love, great to see you today. It. And uh, hey, uh, God bless you. I sure hope this was a blessing to you and the Lord uses this. To yeah, share the life. feed. Share it with somebody and uh, let's, get the, let's get the message of God's love out there. Amen, amen.